Hello and welcome to Cloud Perspector. Today I am going to uh, do a hands on session for whitelisting IP addresses for Lambda function URLs. So, this is going to be our agenda today. So, I will start with basics of Lambda function URL. We are, next is we are going to create a Lambda function where we will be whitelisting in IP addresses. We will be setting that in the environmental variables and uh, we'll, we are going to invoke Lambda function using postman by using the function url we are also gonna check the negative scenario where your ip address is not white listed that the same we are going to check through post so starting with the introduction of lambda function url or lambda function url is a dedicated https endpoint for your lambda function you can create and configure a lambda function url using console or lambda api Okay, so when you create a function URL, Lambda automatically generates a unique URL endpoint for you. Once you create a function URL, it URL endpoint never changes. Okay, function URL endpoints have the following format. So I'll explain you the format. Uh, I'll show you what kind of format does it return on my AWS Commitment Console in the next session, in the next video. I mean, the next part. So this is how we are going to configure our uh, Lambda function. Okay. So when see, this is our Lambda function, which contains the IP validation logic. Okay. So what it's going to do is it's going to pick up the IP address that user is requesting. Okay. It's going to check in the environmental variable. Okay. IP okay, so we we are gonna have an environmental variable set up in the lambda, and there we are going to set up the whitelisted IP address. So if this user IP address is matching with this lambda environmental variable IP, then it is going to execute the business logic that you see over here, and in turn it will return response code two hundred okay for the whitelisted IP address. If it does not match with the IP address. That is configured in the environmental variable, then it is going to return response code file. Okay, so that's how it's gonna work. So follow me along the video. I will now log into my AWS management console and we'll show you, we'll create a lambda function and uh, walk you through the process. So this is my lambda console. I'm logged into the AWS management console. So Navigating to the function, we are going to create a new function out there. Okay, I'll name it as blacklist list whitelist lambda. All right, we'll be selecting uh, Python 3.9 and under the advanced setting, click on enable the function URL. Okay, remember to set odd type as none. Okay. So it will show you a warning message that when you choose what type is known, Lambda automatically creates the following resource based policy and attaches it to the function. The policy makes your fun function public to anyone with the function URL. You can edit the policy later. Okay. So anyone who has the access to the function URL will be able to access your business logic that you have written in the function. Okay. It's going to be publicly accessible. So we are okay with that. I'm now going to click on create function. Okay. So it's going to take a while. So here we go. It has created this Lambda function and uh, this is sample code that we have already. Uh, it's already there. I'll show you the function URL. So when you click on configuration, click on function URL, it's gonna show you function URL like this. So it it is suffixed with lambda hyphen URL dot region code, uh, like the already zone code, AP South one. So this is the AP South one is the Asia Pacific Mumbai. Okay, on dot AWS. Okay, so this is how the function URL looks like. Click on code and we are going to paste our code, which is going to check the IPs. Okay. 
So as you can see, we have this check IP function over here. It's going to take two parameters, which is IP address and IP range. So IP range is kind of the environmental variable that we are going to set. Okay. So this block is going to just check the IP and return the appropriate uh, uh, true or false. Okay. And here we are returning. See, as you can see, if it is success, then it's returns invocation successful. Okay. And if it is not in the IP range, then we are returning status code 500 with the messages unauthorized. Okay. So uh, this is how it's going to work. And uh, I'll show you the environmental variable part. So here we are reading it from the environmental variable. Okay. So you see IP range is the environment variable that we need to set. We have not currently set any environment variable. So I'll show you how to set that. Okay. So under configuration, you see this environment variable, right? We don't have any environmental variable set at the moment, but without, I will invoke this function without, you know, setting the environmental variable. So I have deployed my function. Click on configuration, click on function URL. I just copy this function URL and open up the my postman. Okay. Under here, I'm going to click new HTTP request and paste the function URL. Okay. Click on send. It's going to return the message as unauthorized because it is not able to find any IP over there. Okay. In the set in the environmental variable. So this is the expected behavior. We are going to click on edit, add environment variable. IP range is the name of the environment variable. Okay. So next is I will get the IP address. Okay. So this is my IP. I'm going to paste it over here. So you can also paste multiple IP addresses over here. Okay. So this is done. My IP is set. Click on save. And we are good to go now. Okay. Now we will invoke this function again. So we are getting the messages get method invoked successfully. Okay. Now let's put a different IP over here in the configuration. Let me put it as 119, which is not my IP. So this way we can test over this negative scenario as well. All right. Click on send and we are again getting the unauthorized. Okay. So basically this is how the uh, blacklist whitelist works in lambda okay using the environmental variable you can uh, allow only whitelisted ips to access your lambda function but of course there are some disadvantages okay uh, when you decide to choose this methodology so first first of all for all the invalid calls okay the invocation calls from the ip addresses which are not whitelisted the lambda function will get triggered each time and that will add up the cost for each unwanted call. Okay. Next is for each valid call, the invocation calls from the IP addresses which are whitelisted. The validation of IP address logic will add up the execution time and added relevant cost. Okay. So you can see, right? We have written a custom logic to check the IPs. Okay. And validate the IPs. So on top of the business logic, this function will get invoked on all valid or invalid uh, uh, access, access calls, okay? So that will, of course, going to uh, add some cost in your bill. Next is you cannot whitelist private IP addresses, for example, private, I, private VPC IP ranges, okay? So these are some of the disadvantages, but of course, if you, uh, if you are having limited number of uh, function calls, then this is a good idea to protect your function URL in case you want to keep it as public. Okay. So that's it for this session, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Do like and subscribe my channel and uh, see you again in the next video.